friends, you are watching Arudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. This channel provides basics of finite element analysis and computer-aided mechanical engineering design and analysis using CAD-related software. Let's get started. Uh, hello friends, today I'll show one specific heat transfer problem uh, by using SOLIDWORKS Flow Solution. The problem was given by one of my subscriber. It is a specific problem from the industry. It consists of a water pool with length 1000 mm, breadth 600 and height 700 mm. At the bottom of this one, one heater is provided and we have specific ranges of heater from 5 kW, 10 kW and 15 kW. We can provide water inside that pool from this end and this one is considering as a output end. Water inside that pool is 20 degree centigrade and we have to provide heat in such a way that after one hour the temperature of the fluid will be 80 degree centigrade. This is our goal, right? So the input variables what we have been provided is heater having specific ranges from 5 kW to 15 kW. We can increase it as per requirement and the convective heat transfer coefficient of the walls is 30 watt per meter square degree Kelvin. Our goal is to have the pool water to be 80 degree centigrade for that we have to select that specific range of heater. Right? So we are starting this analysis using solid flow solution and the lead of this one is already provided. First of all we will see that solid volume is generated or not that we checked. So check geometry. It is an internal analysis so we will check internal structure whether volume is generated or not that we check first. Check the geometry first. It is successful so uh, geometry is okay. Next to that we will see the volume generated. Show fluid volume. It is okay. So we can go for our analysis, right? First of all, we have to create that flow simulation environment by using wizard. And we're keeping the name of the project as default project one. It will be SI system and temperature will consider at as degree centigrade and pressure will be in bar. Next, it is an internal analysis and it is a heat conduction in solids. By the same time, it is a transient analysis, so we'll consider time for that one also. Time dependent equal to one hour, that is 3600 seconds. And output time step equal to, we're considering 10 seconds, that is, after each 10 seconds, we'll get the results. We'll save the results after each 10 seconds and gravity will also be considered. You can see the gravity direction actually you can see it will be in the y direction. So value of gravity will be minus 9.81 meters per second square in the direction y. Next the liquid will consider as water only at 20 degrees centigrade next the metals will be taking as steel that is steel 302 and we are considering default wall and thermal conditions next temperature will consider as 20 degree centigrade and for solids also the temperature will be 20 degree centigrade let's finish it and we can start it first of all we have to start with the computation domain you can see the domain this is the domain all the parts of the body should be inside this domain nothing should be outside we can make it a little bit bigger the domain should be such that volume should not be very high and volume should not be less also if it is very high then time for calculation will be more 
and if it is less sometimes it may there is a probability that some parts may be outside because you have provided the lead no after making the lead sometimes it may so it may go outside so this is our domain it is okay perfect is ready green check then hide the domain All right we can provide solid material we have already provided let's see insert solid material it will be predefined and it will be alloys pull is selected with the material stainless steel 302 next one we have to provide that heater so we can take it from we can take it from tools flow simulation insert then it will be surface source initially we are considering 15 kilowatt as a heater input so we'll take heater input as 15 kilowatt that means 15,000 watt and we have to select that heater so we can select it from here the heater is selected green check so heater is having capacity to produce 15 thousand joules per second as heat input right we can select this one you can see this from isometric view this is the model right okay next one we have to apply boundary conditions now for better application of boundary conditions we can make a segmented view of the model throughout this input ends we'll cut it from the front plane and let's move it along this input ends so better to see from that side view this is a side view you can cut it across the openings done so this is the input location and this is the output location we have to apply boundary conditions insert boundary conditions will provide the volume for it as 0 0.30105 meter cube per second and thermodynamic conditions we will see that temperature will be 20 degrees centigrade from that input location okay so we have to select that location here grand check it is done now we have to see the other condition boundary conditions insert boundary condition and it will be atmospheric temperature and pressure from the output location right so we'll select this location green check it is done now can select the whole body this is the whole body now another condition is equal that is the walls so again boundary conditions insert boundary conditions we'll select the real walls and it will be having convective heat transfer coefficient equal to 30 watt per meter square degree kelvin We have to select that container we can select it from the geometry itself it is selected grand check so all the boundary conditions have been applied properly next one we have to select the goal in this case we have only one goal that is we have to take the global goal that is average temperature of water to be find out okay so we are selecting a goal as a global goal insert global goal average temperature of water green check it is done now we can run it it has started iterations we can see the results later on 
it will take long time for getting the results whenever it is finished we'll see the results and analyze we need not see the specific cut plots and the trajectories our aim is to find out the wattage of the heater we want to have the temperature of the pool to be 80 degrees centigrade for that what should be the specific wattage of the heater that is our goal right we have considered the heater to be as 15 kilowatt after that we'll go for some kind of parametric study with a specific range maybe we'll consider the range in the parametric study from 25 kilowatt to 35 kilowatt then from that results we'll get a, a specific idea about what will be the required wattage of the heater and based on that finally we'll go for optimization okay let the iterations move on whenever it is finished we'll see the results and it has started already you can see started from 20 degrees centigrade as time is proceeding the average temperature of water is going up whenever it is finished we will see the results and go for further parametric study and analysis okay parametric study is already done we got the results we have conducted five different experiments with different input values of heater wattage and we got the results as at 32.5 kilowatt we got the temperature as 63.79 degrees centigrade and when heater wattage was 27.5 kilowatt we got the temperature of water as 56.9 degrees centigrade uh, our goal is to find out the wattage at which our temperature of water will be 80 degrees centigrade so from these five different experiments we can find that when the wattage is more in that case we can find the temperature to be close to 80 degrees centigrade now in the third experiment we got when the heater wattage was 35 kilowatt we got temperature of water as 67 degrees centigrade so what we can conclude from this uh, study that our wattage should be more than 35 kilowatt right so to get water temperature to be 80 degrees centigrade we have to select uh, wattage that should be more than 35 kilowatt right so we got this one now next to that we have to go for optimization and for optimization we have to select the wattage within a specific range from 40 to 60 kilowatt within that range we are expecting to get the temperature of water to be 80 degrees centigrade right so next one we are going for different analysis that is optimization okay right so starting new optimization it will start from solve new parametric study and we'll start from here it will go for goal optimization and for goal optimization we have to select some input variables we have already told that the variable will be heater wattage and we have decided heater wattage to be 40 to 60 kilowatt okay let's provide heater wattage from the input variables we have selected heat generation rate as one of the input variable and we have to specify a range of that one let's select the range from let's select the range from 45,000 watt to 60,000 watt you can check the input variable we have selected from 45,000 watt to 60,000 watt next we have to select that criteria and criteria will come from goals definitely but to select the goal we have selected only one goal that is average temperature of which should be 80 degrees centigrade that is our goal now target value we have to decide we are planning to have target value to be 80 degrees centigrade and we want to achieve this temperature within a variation of let's select the variation to be plus minus 0 0.5 degrees centigrade so target we have decided now let's see the scenario and let's run it iteration has already been started what it will do initially it will start with the maximum input value what we have decided as 60 kilowatt after 
this will start with the minimum one that means uh, 45 kilowatt in this way it will try to minimize the gap in between and try to find out the optimum value which is 80 degree centigrade okay in this way these iterations will go on whenever it is finished we'll see the results and analyze it okay iterations for optimization is complete actually with the two set of values with the minimum and maximum one it has completed and here in this case we can see that uh, we got our optimum result with a deviation of 1.0086 degree centigrade. We can minimize this deviation by taking the range close to this one again. In that case, we have to do again optimization, right? So what we got in this case, initially we conducted one analysis inside a pool. Water was there at 20 degree centigrade and from the heater we supplied uh, heat at a rate of 15 kilowatt and we found that temperature was not going up as we expected so to have a specified range of temperature of water we did some parametric study and from parametric study we got an idea about what should be the specific range of what is to get the optimum temperature of 50, 80 degrees centigrade based on that we optimized and we specified a range of 60 kilowatt to 45 kilowatt Within that range, it has already found the water temperature of uh, pool at 60 kilowatt water temperature was 101.76 degrees centigrade and at 45 kilowatt water temperature of the pool is 81 degrees centigrade. So in this case, we got a deviation of 1. This is okay. So allowable. Though we considered allowable range to be 0.5 but in this case 1 is okay. Otherwise, we can go for further analysis. It will take long time that's why we are stopping this analysis here so this is our result that means to have a temperature of water at 80 degrees centigrade we have to keep the heater at wattage of 45 kilowatt okay this is all about our today's design analysis and optimization of a heat transfer problem using solid or flow simulation if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you again. Bye.